Today we're joined by Luke Schumacher, a 14-year-old McDevitt student who just recently published his first novel uh, titled It's Only a Headache. Um, I finished reading my copy a couple of weeks ago, uh, but even before that, we knew that we wanted to have Luke on the show. I think it's a great thing uh, that has happened. Um, so how are you doing, Luke? Um, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so first, do you want to chat a little bit about what this book is about um, for the people that haven't read it, including my uh, two co-hosts? Yeah, um, so it's basically about, um, it's a little hard to explain, as you can probably tell after reading it, but it's sort of about this boy who gets like some kind of curse placed on him, and this curse gives him like awful headaches and visions and nightmares, so um, he basically tries throughout the whole book to get rid of these with like the help of his friends, and it has some elements of like realistic fiction while some elements of like science fiction or fantasy so it kind of, it's kind of a combination of a lot of different genres. Uh, so we wanted you on because uh, this is a huge feat to accomplish. I'm sure many other people have the relatable experiences I do of taking on writing at a young age, just like you. Um, you know, I've, I've written short stories and many different projects, but none of them ever like, you know, came to fruition. And you didn't abandon this project. You uh, published a more than 350 page book at age 14. And uh, so, can you talk a little bit about the publishing part? It's not only about writing the, the 350 pages, it's about putting a book together and putting it out into the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, publishing it was one of the most interesting parts I think about doing it. Like there was a lot of research I had to do about like how self-publishing works and things like that. Um, like a lot of people assumed I went out and got an agent, but I decided to take a route called self-publishing where you basically have to do a lot of the work by yourself. So like it took a lot of different steps. Like I had to get an editor, I had to get a cover designer. Um, I had to like buy like the barcodes slash ISBNs, things like that. So it wasn't cheap, it wasn't easy, but it was really rewarding once it was all done. That's amazing. Um, how has the response been so far? Um, it's been really positive actually. Um, I've um I made some posts about it on like Instagram and TikTok and things like that. And like um, people were so impressed by it. Like, I'm pretty sure one of the videos got 26,000 views. Wow. Um, and um, that was insane. And some of the messages and comments I got after that were really heartwarming. Like, um, I saw some people being like, um, oh, you inspired me to keep writing my book, or I'm going to do this now. And I talked to a bunch of sixth grade classes from my school near the last couple weeks. And like one of my teachers came up to me and was like, a bunch of my students are now wanting to write their own books or are starting their own books. And it's like, it was just, it was really like inspiring to see that. That's awesome. That's exactly what you want to hear. Um, speaking of classes, how has the uh, Waltham education system helped you in writing this book? Um, I had two really good teachers who helped me throughout it. Um, like they both, <clears throat> One of them um, let me like stay after school and work on it there. And we even started like a writing club at our school together. And um, the other one like read the entire thing and gave me advice. And we also just talked about like literature a lot and like how it works in different ways and things like that. So they're both really helpful. Um, do, you, do you want to name drop them? Yeah, um, the first one that I mentioned was named um, Ms. Hershon and the second was named Ms. Whipple. Um, and when I got interviewed by the news for, um, Channel 5, um, they both like came on with me. So that was really fun. That's awesome. That's amazing. Um, so sexuality plays a central role in one of the characters in your story. And it's mentioned uh, several times throughout the book. Can you talk about why it was important for you to put a spotlight uh, on that struggle? Yeah, well, um, I'm gay myself. So um, and a problem I sort of had while growing up is that there wasn't a lot of like representation for those things while growing up. Like it's not really seen as the norm. Um, and like it's getting better these days but like um, I've noticed that a lot of young kids are probably going to be reading the book so um, I want them all to feel represented in different ways um, so that's one way I thought was really important by giving like the representation that was needed for that. Absolutely it's inspiring. Um, just a uh, last question uh, Waltham is not known for being an artist city uh, but we have a small, thriving community of artists. Um, I asked this to Spectacle as well, who um, you'll see in this video as well. Um, do you have any ideas for how you think we can do, uh, we as a city, municipally, and a, at a cultural level, um, be doing better uh, to center the arts in uh, our city? Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, there's there's a lot of talented people in Waltham, I've noticed. Like, a couple of the kids I've met at my school, like, they'd also have big endeavors and stuff. And, like, they, they didn't see them as, like, really big, but, like, they, they were really cool. So it's, like, I think some kind of, like, spotlight program or, like, student art program, student spotlight program, things like that could be great for, like, incorporating, like, those things into the town. We reached out to the first, um, what was it, the first news thing I did with the patch. But after I got that, then the Channel 5 news came to me, and then you guys came to me. So it's, like, I got lucky here with a lot of people approaching me, but, like, it's not the same for everyone. So I think some kind of program for, like, boosting people up like that would be great. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are tons of people just like you that have these projects. And uh, unlike you, they just abandon the projects because they don't think it's worthwhile. Uh, but there are tons of worthwhile projects in the world just because the 14 doesn't mean they're not important. You should stick with your projects, complete them, and put them out into the world. And uh, there are people that want to see them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, this has been great, Luke. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, what is next for you, Luke Schumacher, published novelist? Well, um, a lot of people have asked that, and I, I'm just as, like, confused about it as everyone else is. Like, um, I finished my first stage play recently, mm -hmm. um, and that was really fun. I, I'm really into theater, so writing a play was something new, but I really loved doing that. Um, and I don't know. I've always wanted to write, like, a musical and things like that, um, so I might try that. Um, I I don't plan to write a sequel for this book. I just don't think it warrants one. Um, it doesn't... Um, I might someday, but at the at this point, I don't really see like I could use one. But I definitely want to do a lot more writing, and I've done that already, like with like some writing contests and things like that. Oh, that's awesome, Luke! Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thanks so much for letting me come on. Of course.